Hello, good, ever, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Desmond, and I'm the author of The Black Carpenter's Guide. And today, we're be go we will be diving into my book titled The Black Carpenter's Guide. Uh, we'll be diving into Chapter 6, uh, which is titled Tools of the Trade. Uh, a little bit about Chapter 6. We'll, we'll, we will be talking about uh, the importance of tools in our trade. Uh, hand tools, we will be talking about power tools, we will be talking about their safe operation and maintenance, and we'll also be diving into work boots and purchasing a work truck. Uh, so without further ado, let's hop in. The tools of the building trades. Okay, chapter six, the tools of the trade. Quality tools versus cheap tools. Let's start with lesson number one. Your tools are your livelihood and speak a lot about how seriously you take your profession. My tools are an extension of me and my skills as a carpenter. For me to produce a high quality product, I must purchase the best, the best tools available. Lesson two is that by purchasing quality tools, they break less often, saving time and replacement costs over the long run. Another benefit of making a habit of only buying high quality tools is that they come with lifetime warranties, giving you an added peace of mind and serves as a built-in insurance policy. One point overlooked as well by the black or minority carpenter out in the field with less discretionary income than their counterparts is your tools say a lot about you and set the first impression that others make of you on the job site. Have you ever heard the expression, you never get a chance to make a first impression? This is true, especially for the black carpenter who is often stereotyped as being less valued in the trades compared to white and Mexican counterparts. Okay, next we're gonna cover selecting a pair of carpenter bags. What type of carpenter bags should you purchase? I have spent a great deal of money over the past 25 years trying many different types of bags and brands from the very cheap to, mo to the most expensive. What I recommend is that you purchase a good set of high quality Occidental uh, leather carpenter bags. A good set of leather our Kevlar bags will set you back about 300 bucks. One of the benefits of purchasing a good set of bags is they come with deep pockets to hold your tools securely when climbing ladders or crossing over building footings. You can purchase them from building supply stores or online. And another, another tip I'd like to leave you with is when you're in the store uh, and you're thinking about purchasing bags, don't just, uh, grab a pair because they look nice. What you wanna do is visualize the tools that you have in your bag, uh, exactly where's your quick square and your tape measure and your pencils and your plumb bob and snap line gonna go where you can easily reach in and retrieve them when you're out in the field. Because uh, being able to easily locate a tool is gonna to make you more productive. And with a uh, quality bag, you have the deeper pockets which is going to make uh, your tools secure so you won't be losing tape measures and, and things of that nature when you're climbing ladders and you're uh, running around job sites getting material. So this is another, uh, another piece of information you should definitely keep in mind. All right, next we're going to be covering uh, your basic hand tools, which is your tape measure, uh, quick square, level, hammer, chalk line, plumb bob, your cat's paw, and your utility knife. Uh, these are some of the, the bare minimum basic tools you're gonna need as a carpenter uh, and that you should have in your bags. Um, and I'm gonna just briefly touch on each one, uh, just real briefly. Uh, number one is your tape measure. And uh, the reason why you wanna have a tape measure is pretty straightforward. You need to know 
uh, the different lengths of material uh, so you can lay out your lines of cut. You're going to be checking for square, uh, square dimensions on like concrete forms and your framing. Uh, and you also need a tape. Uh, so I, what I what I recommend, what I usually purchase is the 30 foot Fat Max tape. Uh, that allows me to do a lot of basic layout. Uh, it's an ex extremely strong and durable tape. Uh, and one of the main features about it is it has a locking mechanism. And you also can do what I call walking the tape. A lot of times as a journeyman carpenter, you need to extend your tape, sometimes uh, up to 10, 15 feet, so you can pull a measurement. Uh, from a, on top of a wall or the side of a wall or something like that. And you don't always want to have to walk to that location. So what you do is you walk your tape. So you're going to grab your tape and you're going to keep extending it. You're going to keep extending that tape out. And it's called walking the tape. So that's one of the great reasons about buying a Fat Max tape. I highly recommend. Okay, next thing you need, a uh, basic tool you need is a, is a quick square. Uh, this is a metal uh, tool that you're going to have in your bag. It's it's its purpose is to lay out square cuts, uh, and you can lay out degrees and angles uh, for things like that. I think it goes up every anywhere from five to seventy-five degrees or ninety degrees. Uh, and also, there has another side of there's another side on it that you can use to lay out uh, roof rafters. Uh, hips and valley cuts when you're framing roofs. So uh, another tool you're going to need is that quick square. Make sure you get one. Uh, I like to get the colored ones. They come in different colors, red, blue, silver. Uh, I actually like mine's colored because they're easier to spot. A lot of times when you're on job sites, you know, it's dirt. Uh, there's a lot of things around. So when you drop that square, you want to be able to easily locate it. So I suggest getting a high visibility color. Uh, next, we're going to talk about a level, uh, and uh, the level I'm talking about that's going to go in your bag is a torpedo level. This is a uh, this is a short level from anywhere from six inches to a foot. Uh, it's made it's a it's a level that you can bring out. You don't you don't really want to check anything uh, anything critical, but it gives you an idea if something is being close to square or plumb. So you're usually going to use it for small increments, uh, checking level and plumb on an area like a foot, maybe two foot at the most. Uh, anything longer than that, you're going to bring out your four foot level or another longer level, depending on how on what you're trying to check. Uh, next thing, you're going to need a good hammer. Uh, they have all different kinds of hammers nowadays. Uh, and in each hammer, they have different hammers for different purposes. So if you're a framer, uh, obviously you should get a framing hammer. If you're a laborer and doing a lot of demo, you would get a, a different type of hammer. If you're doing drywall, they have a, a hammer with a hatchet in on the end. So uh, it just depends on the job that you're doing. So uh, keep that in mind when you go out and buy your hammer. And also another thing I learned about hammers is you want to make sure the handle uh, has good shock absorption qualities. Uh, a lot of the old metal hammers, uh, if you use them over years, they're going to cause joint and cartilage jam damage that can lead to arthritis. So I recommend getting one that's fiberglass or wood or another material besides metal because they just don't stop. They just don't absorb shock very well. Uh, next tool you're going to need, basic tool in your bags, you're going to need a chalk line. Uh, chalk line is for snapping lines. Uh, over distances so you can uh, make your cuts. So you want to get a quality chalk line. They have really cheap ones, but uh, the string gets caught up when you try to change them, and, and they're just a headache. Believe me, uh, it's better just to invest a little bit more and get you a quality chalk line. Uh, so don't try to save money there. Next thing that you need is a plumb bob. Nowadays with lasers, you don't see as many of them that you're used to, but it's, it's a good backup. Uh, tool. Uh, so you tie this instrument on the end of a string line, you drop that line, and the weight of that line will have this the string com completely plumb. And from that string line, you're going to measure distances from uh, 
from the string line to the wall of the string line to whatever you're trying to measure. And if you get a consistent mess, uh, uh, a consistent measurement is telling you that that uh, wall or whatever you're trying to check is plumb straight up and down. Uh, next thing you need a cat's paw. A cat's paw is uh, it's a small pry bar that you keep in your uh, you keep in your bags. Uh, I recommend the Vaughn. They're very strong, durable. Uh, I bought cheaper ones. They end up breaking. They don't have the right curvature where you can pull a nail easily. So uh, yeah, get. I recommend getting the the Vaughn cat's paw. Uh, make sure you get a good one though. Don't try to save money there as well. And last but not least, you need a utility knife. Uh, basic for basic cutting uh, ties plastic uh, felt uh, building paper uh, and there's numerous things you use your utility knife for sharpening your pencil so uh, you're going to want to get one of them as well so them are the basic hand tools that I recommend that you start off with all right now we are going to talk about electric power tools Okay, let's cover operation and safety. Our right, one of the first tools every every carpenter needs is a good electrical circular saw for rough cutting materials. There are many choices depending on your needs, taste, and budget. The following are what I recommend after them proving their value out in the commercial field and, con and construction industry. The heavy duty skill saw with worm drive is sold at building supply and tool centers and online as well. And has been used in the construction industry by journeyman carpenters for over the past 20 years. This saw can take a lot of physical abuse such as being dropped and the cord being used to pull them up ladders. It is almost indestructible. I said almost. The only maintenance that is required is to check the oil and sometimes I've had to replace cords, with you, which you can purchase easily. What more in a tool can you ask for? Okay, power tools. Skill saw brand also makes the Mag 77 model. This saw is a much lighter. This saw is much lighter, and the main advantage is for carpenters who do a lot of overhead, vertical, or horizontal cuts. The DeWalt brand also makes a very good commercial grade saw. They have been making quality tools such as tape measures, ladders, cordless tools, air compressors for over the past 20 years. The recent appearance of their 60 volt battery powered saw out in the field has impressed me enough to make it, on, make it one of the only two that I recommend. I personally tested it out at job sites, it's lightweight along with the smooth operation makes it a pleasure to work with. Getting back to electric saw basics, the cutting blade can be replaced with specialty blades. You can purchase anything from a rough ripping, from rough ripping blades to a fine finished cutting blade with different teeth counts depending on your project needs. You can also purchase diamond blades for cutting concrete. These blades have rough cut industrial diamonds inserted in the blades for cutting concrete. Be very careful when cutting concrete, not to overwork the motor on your electric uh, power saw, you can end up burning out the motor. They also sell metal cutting blades used for cutting steel, such as rebar, strips, and all thread. Uh, the main point that I want you to get out of this is uh, they uh, skill saws can cut almost anything. They have a, a, a different array of blades, anywhere from cutting wood, metal, uh, roof tiles. They have all different types of blades, depending on whatever project that, uh, that you're working on. So when you're buying your saw blade, uh, make sure that it's designed for the project or the material that you plan on using it with. Uh, another, another very important thing about operating a, a, a saw, any saw, and that is the watch for kickbacks. Uh, you always want to keep this, the, uh, the protection blade down, the, the guard rail down. And if you hear the, the saw winding when you're, when you're cutting, 
uh, it's doing that for a reason. It's letting you know that you're overworking the motor and you're binding the blade. And most of the time, you need to lift that saw up, reinsert it, and make sure you're cutting a straight line and you're not cutting a bend. Because if you're cutting a bend, uh, you are in danger of either burning out the motor or, or having a kickback, and either one of them are not good. Okay, power tools continue. Eventually, you will need to purchase a good reciprocating saw for demolition work. I recommend the Milwaukee brand. This sawzall has proven its durability and reliability out in the field in the commercial construction industry for years. The sawzall is basically an electric hand saw that moves back and forth at a high rate of speed. They're used mainly in demolition work, but are also very effective in cutting wood beams and thick stock lumber. The tool, this tool will cut through almost anything with the right blade. Blades come in different sizes, lengths, and teeth count depending on your project needs. Uh, they have a they have a blade that's one of my favorites. It's called the Torch, uh, and it's made from Diablo. I love Diablo blades. Uh, unlike cheaper blades that burn up after not a long period of use, these blades are made to last. Uh, and uh, Diablo makes a very high, a high quality blades. They're a little bit more expensive, but I highly recommend you get them. And how you know you're buying a Diablo is their, their trademark is the, cover, the color red. Uh, so diving back in, they come in different sizes, lengths, teeth counts. They are in, they're an indispensable tool for cutting through lumber like four by fours, nail embedded lumber, PVC, conduit, metal, etc. I also recommend that you own at least one with a cord before purchasing a cordless model. So uh, my rule of thumb is every tool that I have, I have a I have a corded model or electric model that I plug in, uh, 120 power, and I also have a battery power tool. So if I have a sawzall that I have to plug in, I have one that's cordless. So that way you're covered no matter what job comes up. You're covered if there's not a power source. So uh, I know when you're first starting, you may not be able to do that, but that should be your main goal. You want to have one corded tool, one cordless tool, and probably also a backup. Uh, so getting back to what I was saying, the reason behind this is cordless tools need not be charged before and during use. Many demolition projects require many hours of continuous operation, and uh, that's when I use my cordless, my, my corded sawzall, because I know I don't have to keep charging the battery, and it's going to run all day long. Uh, you will want your tool in this example to be hassle-free without the added headache of needing to be charged. Some carpenters would argue otherwise with the recent improvements in cordless battery technology like the lithium batteries, making them a close competitor uh, to its electric plug-in tool counterpart. Okay, now we will be discussing pneumatic power tools. I think every carpenter should purchase an air compressor and a nail gun. If space is not a factor in your purchase, I recommend you purchase a double tank compressor or a large tank compressor. Then you will have all the air pressure and power you need to run multiple guns or pneumatic tools, depending on the size of the, the project and the job site. Hitachi compressors and nail guns have always been my favorite brands. There are many choices and brands to choose from. My advice before purchasing one, if possible, is you, uh, if you have the opportunity to borrow someone's or use the companies that you use that out in the field, that way you can get a feel for it, uh, judge the quality and reliability of it, and after then go out and purchase it. Uh, that's not always possible, but that is highly recommended if you can go that route, and that's what I recommend. Power guns, pneumatic power tools. Having a nail gun will improve, will improve your productivity 
on framing job sites. You also can eliminate or reduce a lot of cartilage and nerve damage to your joints that comes after years of needlessly swinging a hammer. Don't underestimate the importance of this, of avoiding impact trauma to your joints. When I was a young apprentice, journeyman carpenters warned me of the damage to my joints that can happen from swinging a metal hammer that has little or no shock absorption protection and how that could end up damaging my joints. I did not take their advice and now I'm paying the price in joint pain and arthritis that could have easily been reduced or eliminated by purchasing a nail gun, compressor, and letting them do the work for me. Now we will cover the topic of cordless tools. Eventually you will need to add a battery tool arsenal to work effectively. For every electric quarter tool I purchase, I purchase the same tool in a cordless version. The main reason is that cordless tools give you the ability to work without having a power source nearby or having to carry and roll out hundreds of feet of cord to do your job. This can save you time and frustration. The new battery operated tools sold today are much more powerful than their predecessors of just a few years ago. New lithium battery technology has allowed battery life to improve and reduce the size and weight of batteries and tools. Cordless tools are rivaling the power of tools with cords as technology improves. Many of the manufacturer brands sell battery operated tools and bundles for greater savings. If you purchase a tool in a bundle package, your savings will be much more than if you buy that tool separately, saving yourself hundreds if not thousands of dollars depending on how many tools you purchase a year. Uh, the brands I recommend in this area are Makita, Milwaukee, and DeWalt. These combo kits often come with cordless saws, drill motors, impact drivers, and flashlights. Cordless tools you purchase should come with a battery charger and at least two batteries. You need two batteries so that one is always charging when the other one is in use. Power actuated tools. The ram set gun function and purpose is to shoot different sized pins and fasteners into concrete or other building materials. Ramset is the brand that I'm most familiar with and may require class training or certificates before you use them out on the job site. You must be careful when operating these power tools. They can cause great bodily harm and death if used incorrectly or in an unsafe manner. They work in the same way as a gun. They fire shots filled with a pen or fastener into surface material. You should keep a pail of water nearby to throw the unspent, unspent shot and to prevent an explosion or fire hazard. Most carpenters will yell out, fire in the hole, when shooting pins and anchors, so not to startle other workers who may be nearby and cause accidents. The most common use I'm aware of for this tool is to pin down bottom plates into a concrete slab. Make sure you're trained and understand the tool before making a purchase. Any other tools you can purchase depending on your specialty out in the field. The rest of the tools you need to purchase can be bought on an as need basis. Most union companies supply their carpenters with power tools and will not allow you to bring your own personal power tools or cords on their job sites. This over the long run can save you hundreds of dollars on wear and tear on your personal tools and replacement costs. This is one of the benefits of being a union carpenter. Many non-union companies require their carpenters to purchase and provide their own power tools. 
A few of these companies will replace or reimburse you if your tool becomes damaged while you're out in the field using it. But it depends on the company and policies vary from one company to another. As a journeyman carpenter or apprentice, tools should become a very important part of your life because they allow you to earn a good living. You will probably be purchasing tools for the rest of your life, so choose wisely and carefully. The next topic we will cover will be tool maintenance and care. Okay, now we're gonna be covering tool maintenance. After years in the trade working as a carpenter, you will most likely have invested thousands of dollars in hand and power tools. This is by no means cheap and will and can add up to be a major cash investment over time like any other investment you need to take care of them and maintain your tools to receive the greatest return and benefit over the long run so how do you take care of your tools brand manufacturers will often have a manufacturer's booklet that comes uh, when you purchase your hand and power tools in this situation, it's best to follow the guidelines of the manufacturer. Many times it's just a matter of using common sense. Uh, only use a tool for what it's designed for. This will not only increase the tool's life, but prevent needless and countless injuries. Uh, some common sense and basic things is don't use your hammer uh, uh, as anything except a hammer. Don't use your screwdriver as a chisel. Uh, they weren't designed for this, and uh, you need to use them in accordance of what the manufacturer designed the tool for. Uh, so never carry, never carry or pull tools up a ladder by the cord. This is a big one, especially uh, carpenters out in the field. The main reason is that uh, they need to pull up a tool or lower them down, up and down the ladder in the process of working. A simple solution to this problem when working off a ladder is always carry a short length of rope. Uh, if you do this, you'll be able to pull up your skill saw, hammer, or whatever else you may need for the day. You're gonna use a short length of rope for that and not pull it up by the tool. So all you gotta do is uh, tie a slip knot uh, and you can use this for lowering and raising tools. Lower and raising your tools. Uh, this is also an OSHA requirement. Okay, we are going to talk about uh, saw safety. Uh, never cut with a dull saw. This dangerous practice may damage the motor by overworking it, but also it may cause a kickback, which can sever fingers and limbs. If a blade is dull, replace it with a new one immediately. Hand tools that are broken or chip should be repaired or replaced or taken out of service. Keep tools clean and dry and stored in an organized manner when not used. Many tools can become damaged by throwing them in the job box at the end of the shift or job assignment. Remember, a damaged tool will not be of any use for you the next day. The time you think you are saving by just throwing the tool in the box may cause damage and it could become broken in the process. This will cause you both time and money. When you need a tool, it is much faster to find it in a clean and organized job box. We make our living by using and depending on quality tools to help us get our job done. Treat all tools like you're your own, like they're your own and you will be less likely to damage them. Next, we'll be covering the topic of your work boots. Work boots. Now that I've driven home the importance of your tools, let's move on to your work boots. Being a carpenter or out in the field, you will be required to be on your feet all day or at least for long extended periods of time. Experience has taught me to buy the highest quality steel boots to protect my feet and provide comfort and durability while working. There are many choices and boots from shoe manufacturers like Sears Die Hard and Wolverines. 
One of the benefits of purchasing Wolverines, which which I purchase, I find one of my favorites, uh, is that they're, they, they have a feel like they're already broke in. They're extremely comfortable when you put them on. And unlike a, a lot of other boots, your feet don't hurt for the first week. So that's extremely important when you're in construction and something you definitely should consider. Many stores like Boot World and Sears may offer discounts for tradesmen and women. This is something you should check out when you purchase your next set of boots. Savings can amount to 10% of the purchase price. And also once a year, manufacturers like Die Hard and Wolverines hold their Black Friday deals. This is a great time to take advantage and stock up on multiple pair at a time. Okay, now we're briefly going to be covering work trucks. Now that you have your tools, your work boots squared away, let's talk transportation. I believe every person who plans on uh, making a career out of construction for an extended period of time should own and purchase a truck. This is especially true for the black carpenter. I can't tell you all the opportunities that owning a truck has opened up for me. My truck serves as an office, a workstation, and a mobile factory. If you're committed to this industry and are going to invest in quality tools, it only makes sense to own a truck to secure and transport your tools to job sites. Let's reflect on what I stated earlier that you only get one chance to make that first impression. If two carpenters apply for employment at the same job, one pulls up in a truck with a mounted toolbox and rack, the other one pulls up in a Cadillac, who do you think will be perceived as having the most value as a skilled tradesman. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with owning a Cadillac. I've owned one myself. The point I'm trying to make is that they have no place on a job site unless you're a white collar worker and you're not working out in the field. As minorities, we need every advantage we can get to level the playing field. So save your luxury or sport car for weekend and off-site activities. All right, now we're about to uh, wrap up chapter six in my book titled, The Black Carpenter's Guide. Uh, so after purchasing a reliable work truck, you will want to get a toolbox mounted in the bed for securing and transporting your tools. Uh, a lumber rack for transporting lumber. Now that we've covered all the basic from boots to your work truck, you're off to a great start. You have all the basic tools you need as a skilled tradesman. You're on the fast track to becoming an in-demand carpenter. As minorities, we need every advantage we can get to level the playing field. So the main, uh, the main things I want you to get out of this chapter is that your tools are, are very important and they're an extension of you as a carpenter. So you want to take your time, you want to invest in quality tools. Uh, you want to use a lot of these tools out in the field before you even purchase them. And what you can do uh, by that is if other carpenters have a hammer or a compressor or a nail gun that you like, ask them if you can borrow it uh, after using it, see how it feels, is, if it suits your needs, is it reliable? And then and only then do you go out and spend the money and buy that tool. Uh, so in conclusion, if you want to learn more about subjects like this, you need to check out my book, The Black Carpenter's Guide, where I cover uh, these topics and more in greater detail about how to exceed and excel in the field of construction as a black or a minority worker. Uh, you can also check out my YouTube channel uh, the Black Carpenter's Guide, where you will find uh, numerous videos on different aspects of construction, every, everything from framing to form work to getting your contractor's license. So I highly suggest that you check that out. Uh, sign up uh, so you can have the videos come to you on a regular basis uh, and hit my subscribe button. Uh, last but not least, you can check me out on Facebook, Collins Builders. I uh, have a website you can check that, check that out as well, or you can always reach out to me on a personal level. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to get this done for you. I hope this has been of value. Uh, uh, 
So if you want more of this material, check out my YouTube channel, and uh, you will find more. You have a great day. It's been a pleasure serving you.